polls have closed in Wisconsin. You know what that means. It's time to start the show. Come on. Let's get a big Wisconsin. I got you guys to go along with that more than I've gotten you guys to clap for me ever before starting the show. So that's a good sign. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. I'm so glad they're all here together on this night where no one is struck with anxiety where no one's freaked out and no one has any big thoughts about what tomorrow brings. Did you all park off the main streets? Okay, good. Keep your car location secret. Just to, just to be clear, I asked if you parked off the main streets, nothing. I asked for you to go, give me a big Wisconsin and everyone goes, Wisconsin. So that's cool, that's a, that's a good reaction, guys. Uh, you may notice in the back of the room, we do have our home sweet home election correspondent, Danny McCabe is here. Uh, Danny will be coming up, uh, taking this as seriously as it deserves. You can look at him, it's fine. Uh, he'll be coming up, taking this as seriously as it deserves, um, letting you guys know the results of various states as they close and as they're called. Uh, so you don't have to spend all night looking at your phone, stressing out, showing it to your friends, going, oh my God, my womb is in trouble, or they're going to trans my kid, or whatever you think is going to happen tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Uh, I went to the meeting and they didn't tell me what they decided they were going to do tonight, so... Uh, them being, you know, the power brokers. What does that mean? I was hoping someone would reveal it. I've been trying to get in with the power brokers forever. Oh, Danny's coming to the front. Alright, there's an election. There's an election update from Danny McCabe. Yeah, yeah. It looks like Trump is leading in Wyoming right now. And as we all know, Wyoming is one of those 50 states. Stay tuned for more. All right. <laughs> That's important. You're going to need Wyoming. Um, hey, just, you know, this is a fun thing. This is someone for the audience. Well, give, me a, give me a fun fact about Wyoming. What's our favorite fact about Wyoming? It has Jackson Hole. You are the only one in this room who is going to have any facts about Wyoming. I really, I'm surprised someone had something. And I... What's that? They hate women? Oh, wow. In Jackson Hole? I love a hole. Well, you love a Jackson Hole if I'm right, huh? I'm just judging people. Uh, all right. So tonight is an open mic, as we all know. It's also an election night, so that's going to be fun. I've done a bunch of these on election nights. Um, they are a lot of fun to be in. You're sort of stuck in the storm with everybody because throughout the night, people will be really excited and then they'll be really dour. Then they'll be really excited, then they'll be really dour. And uh, sometimes the city catches on fire in the middle of the night while you're doing this. So that's fun too, but we're on the opposite side of the city. It's good we gotta have a selfie. That's always important. Uh, here's where I was on the last free night in America. Thank God your first comic just walked up the steps so I can stop filibustering. Uh, filibuster, political term. You guys like that? It's thematic. Prashant, you're first. Oh, yeah. yeah. But not, not now. Not, not, I was just telling you you're first. Wow. Jeez Louise. Vivek Ramaswamy still thinks he's running, everybody. No, nah, I'm just kidding. People like Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, <laughs> I think. I don't know if that's true. We'll find out tomorrow morning, huh? How many votes is that guy going to get? Uh, all right, I don't even really feel like doing a lot of this stuff, to be honest. I'm excited the election's going to be over. Are you guys excited the election's going to be over? I'm so excited. I'm sick of arguing about who to vote for. I'm ready to move on to phase two where we argue about who stole whose votes in what states and in what counties. They keep sending these guys to my house for the past, like, three weeks. They keep sending these election workers to my house. They're from the Republicans. They keep asking me if I've heard about the Senate candidate who's running this year. And I go, the retired Navy captain? And they say, yeah, hung cow. And I say, that's no bull. This is killing me because I've never gotten a single one of them to laugh. And every time I've done that on stage, I get at least a few chuckles. And you would think with them coming every day for three weeks, I get one fucking chuckle. You see, if you don't understand, cow is the word for female cow, I guess. I don't know what the generic term for cow is. Oh Actually, you know, if you think, uh, hey, Danny, you're supposed to be the election correspondent, not the science correspondent. Shut the fuck up. That wasn't me. You know what? Shut the fuck up anyways, Danny. <laughs> All right. Things are getting nuts, man. It's like a... People are nervous. If, Trump's, if Trump wins, RFK says they're going to put him in charge of the Health and Human Services Department. And people are freaking out about that. I don't mind that. I think it'd be cool if he was in charge of that. 
I mean, all those resources, maybe he could figure out something to do about his fucking voice. Ah, his voice sucks. All right, guys. See, this is what I said about election night. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I cut my dick shaving. Yeah. Guys, I'm going nonpartisan. I cut my dick shaving. You ever cut your dick shaving? All right, that's a big, quiet laugh. So, yes, you have. Me and this guy are both veterans of the dick shaving wars. Uh, I don't want to do this anymore, guys. I'm giving up on it. So many people looking at me like, what's his dick have to do with what's happening in Virginia's District 7 right now? <sighs> Is there anything on here I care about? Not really. Yeah. Hey, guys, I'm going to make wisecracks throughout the night. But before we begin, everyone's favorite right on time comedian. They call him the Minuteman of comedy. I'd like everybody to put their hands together for Prashant Adele. Home sweet home, what the fuck is up, baby? How y'all doing tonight? That's right, all right, all right. I know it's election season, y'all. I know it's election season. It's election season. It is tonight. It is tonight. That's right. So let's get some jokes out. Let's get some jokes out. Because once it's done, my jokes don't apply. So uh, actually, I'm very happy, y'all. I'm very fucking happy. You know why? Because in 15 years, my dad voted for the first time. Hell yeah, in 15 years, my dad voted for the first time. He was like, yeah, I'm sick and tired of how people are treating immigrants, women, LGBTQ community. And then he just said, all right, I voted for Trump. I was like, hold on, what? I was like, dad, you're not even a citizen. Ooh, election fraud. Election fraud, very touchy, huh? Very touchy. Very touchy, very touchy. I don't like you, white man. <laughs> Fuck you. The fuck? All right, y'all, so uh, someone said men's G-spot is in their anus. And I'm like, how did you conduct that experiment? Because I tried to find mine, but I keep shitting myself. I think I'm hitting the shit spot. You know, I'm like, fuck. I'm still looking, still looking. Uh, also, hmm, I'm, 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 I'm like, what else do I have? What else do I have? I don't have something. Yeah, ho, oh, yeah. Okay, do you all know Jubilee? Jubilee, do you know Jubilee? Right, oh yeah, it's like a YouTube channel where people from opposing parties have a debate, you know, like men's right activists versus feminists, uh, Republicans versus Democrats, fucking Trump supporters versus Kamala supporters. I'm like, yo, I've heard all that shit. We all have heard all that shit. I want to hear something new. Let's have US versus ISIS. Let's bring them to the table. Let's see what do they have to say. That's something new? Wouldn't you pay sir for that? It's like, oh, I want to know too what's going on. Like, shit, I, I heard all these people, but like, the election has really got y'all, huh? <laughs> God damn it, y'all. Uh, I don't like to vote. I don't like to vote because I'm not a citizen yet. But once I do get my citizenship, I don't know still. Still don't know. Still don't know. I can't even make up my mind now. If y'all don't know, it's, uh, it's a very, uh, so here's the truth. Uh, my dad recently got his citizenship, so it's like a big deal, you know? And as soon as he got his citizenship, he was like, how do I register to vote? I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Hell yeah, do your thing. And then he was like, so who do you think I should vote for? If y'all don't know, he's an immigrant, and he's been here for longer than I have. And he's asking me, who do I vote for? He knows who he's going to vote for. He wants to know what I think about it. That's what it is. Yeah. So I was like, okay, uh, I don't know what, whatever policies that you think are close to your heart, like go with that. Whichever party is go for that, just go with that. 
And he's a Christian, so I'm not. I'm a Christian too, but my beliefs are different. I'm still working on that. I don't know where I was going with that. All right, y'all. Uh, that's my time. <laughs> yeah, that's my time. Give it up for your host, Jacob. And give it up for yourself. Prashant Adele, everybody. Please, please forgive him. He had no idea he was going up tonight. He only signed up at 10 a.m. Uh, <laughs> no, that's cool. Uh, whatever you were saying about your dad, and he's a Christian, and you're not, but you are. That was good writing. Um, all right. We just sing moving. Uh, my, wife, my wife texted me this morning. I guess she was listening to some of the news. She was like, if people are worried about like, violence, should we get like bullets? And three minutes later, I got a text from her said, Jacob, what the fuck? I guess our email accounts are still linked. Uh, I just bought 3,000 bullets today. In other news, my son is going to trade school. Um, anyways, if you guys uh, want to shoot off, like pop shit, I'm doing, uh, this is the stuff that Prashant didn't get to. Um, if you guys want to shoot off or pop shit, I don't have bullets, but I do have bullets. Uh, all right, guys, right, we're going to keep this out. Danny, Danny, is there news? There's news. Here comes Danny with news, everybody. Our, our 2024 election correspondent, Danny McCabe. There's news, everybody. There's news. It looks like Kamala Harris has just secured the state of Delaware, which happens to be the first state. But she is still holding out for more electoral votes to hope for that blue wall. And me... Well, I'm not hoping for any blue balls. So, there we go. That's a poem. It's a limerick. It's not. Get it out there. All right, let's bring Jacob back. Thank you. Thank you. And stay tuned to Home Sweet Home. Delaware was called 37 minutes ago. That's how long it took him to wrote blue balls as a joke. All right. <laughs> that's, that's fun. Just use ChatGPT to write the jokes. It'll go faster. Uh, your next comment coming to the stage. Uh, you might recognize this guy from murdering children in Gaza. Put your hands together all the way from the Diamond District. It's James Copeland. Man, you just ruined all my murdering children in Gaza jokes. Now they know the premise already. I'm, can I, first of all, I'm honored to be uh, open for by Steve Kornacki as a furry over there. Um, guys, have you heard about this floating island of garbage in the water? I think it's called Bell Isle, guys. Yeah. Um, guys, I think I figured out the worst Halloween candy. It's even worse than butterscotch. It's diabetic glucose tablets. I thought the kids could use it. There's uh, some chunky little Dracula is showing up at my door. That's all I'm saying. Um, I just got two vaccines at once, guys. So I'm a little extra autistic. Um, just been watching My Little Pony for 18 hours. You know who hates vaccine jokes? The lady giving you the vaccine. Not a fan. Guys, I uh, just got married. Thank you. Got married six weeks ago. Yeah, um, my dad gave a speech at my wedding. He was like James, he was in marching band. Uh, he learned how to unicycle and juggle as a kid. And I went up to him, I was like, Dad, you're making me look like a fucking nerd. I'm trying to get laid tonight. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Guys, uh, I, I was walking my dog the other day, and I ran into a, a man walking his uh, toddler on a leash. And you know, I was just trying to make conversation with the neighbors. I was like, oh, how old is yours? Oh, how, how's the leash training going? Oh, mine's also a mutt. Yeah, it didn't go over great. <laughs> All right, uh, guys, uh, the wedding dress? It's, uh, it's supposed to be white as a symbol of purity. Um, but if my, to be honest, it would be more accurate if my wedding dress was more of a, you know, the color of an old treasure map with a little blood smeared on it. 
Because that's what me and my wife's mattress looks like after eight years of period fucking. All right, got two people paying attention to the room. That's a new record for me. Let's see if I can get it to three. Uh, guys, my wife makes a lot more money than me. Thank you. Yeah, some people ask me if that emasculates me. And I say, no, of course not. The only time I feel emasculated is when she calls me Jessica while she pegs me up the ass. This woman in the chair has not looked at me the entire time. Do you speak English? I, is, I feel like this is like a visiting German table or something. They're like, yes, the, the good American jokes. We will see the dive bar. Thank you, sir. Um, guys, uh, how come uh, they're called tits when they're on women, but they're called bitch tits when they're on men? Doesn't that seem fucked up? All right, that was my first time doing that one. Um, Y'all know this motherfucker got pussy. That was the comment that got me kicked out of the family Facebook group. I uh, commented that on the memorial picture of my uncle. He died from getting too much pussy. I think it's called AIDS. All right, I'll leave you on this one. Um, guys, you know the Chick-fil-A branding? It's like cows doing graffiti. I think those cows, they're just like protesting their own genocide. Like, I, I think they, they just escaped from Ducal. Or maybe Cowschwitz. Yeah, either way, I think they're just protesting Adolf Chickler. All right, thanks, guys. I'm James. James Copeland, everybody. I, uh, I'm a feminist, so I don't call them bitch tits unless there are six of them and they're dangling for little puppies to suckle. All right, I'll never say that again. <laughs> Not even at home. Uh, at some point it said, uh, James said the phrase, chunky Dracula, which is what they call it when you have a miscarriage in a state with a Republican legislature. Hey it's election night, I thought that would go over, but it didn't, so I'm crossing that out too. All right, this is true. Uh, my wife, my wife uh, took the kids recently to a vaccine drive through she thought that'd be a good idea. She wanted me to go with her. I declined. Uh, but do you know what a vaccine drive through is? You load your kids into their car seats. Then you go sit in traffic in a parking lot. And then at some point, two masked strangers open the car doors, stab them both in the legs, and close the car doors on them when they start to scream. I'm glad I did not go. Yes, Danny, did you finish writing your joke for the election did, update? All right, here we go, Danny. I did, I did. So it's funny talking about opening car doors and uh, stabbing and uh, violent crimes like that because uh, it seems that Kamala Harris has just won the state of Illinois. Yeah. yeah, that is crazy. Technically, that was his best joke so far. Uh, all right. We're gonna keep this thing going. Uh, your next comic, you will recognize him from the table of German tourists or whatever James said. Everybody put your hands together for Joel Fertig. What the fuck is going on? So in case you were wondering, I'm a homosexual. So I'm gonna make a whole lot of gay jokes because you know, that's what we do. But you know, I was on the way here tonight <clears throat> And I got stopped by a policeman for drunk driving. But thank God he was dyslexic. He gave me an IUD instead. Well, that's not bad. 
Okay, I met this woman at a bar earlier, and she told me that joke about some comedian she dated in like 1974, and I had to share that, because you know, whatever. So anyway, um, so <clears throat> I love to people watch. People watch is my favorite thing. And so like some of the people that have left, have, have, I'm kind of missing because they like they had the perfect thing. It's like I'm walking around looking at these people, and so you know I'm looking at these people and this thing is not walking with me very far. So you know you have the like super straight people. <clears throat> Can we talk about the Echo sweatshirt? And then can we talk about the shoes? Can you show us the shoe? Can we talk about like? What the fuck? Crocs are the ugliest fucking shoes ever known to man. Why the fuck is anybody gonna wear I'm that? I'm breathing, bitch. <laughs> you're breathing. Breathing. Yeah, he breathing. Yeah. That's your excuse. You're grieving? I literally didn't hear what I wore. Breathing because your shoes are so fucking ugly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just plugged my butt. Wait a minute. What did I? What did I plug? Okay, I plug That's what happens when you have a straight man. <laughs> <laughs> That it? That's it. There we go. See, <coughs> I'm a homosexual who is technically adept. Believe that or not. <laughs> and still doesn't know which hole to put it in. <coughs> oh, honey, I know which hole to put it in. I you want to try it? Oh. <laughs> Just saying how straight I am. But then, so you're walking around the room, you know, and you see, you're like walking through, uh, my favorite place is the gym. So you see this guy walk past you, and you think, okay. Are you a straight guy that looks gay? Or are you a gay guy that looks straight? And they look exactly the fucking same. Like you have no idea which one it is. And you, you, like you know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about, right? You're like, which one? What are you what? What do you want? What? Hot? What? <clears throat> I mean, they're both hot, but whatever, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but then, so then we get into the lesbian. Because, you know, you, you've got the good lesbians, and the lesbians are either, like, the lipstick lesbians who are, like, you know, just painted to the gods. And then you also have the, like, flannel ones. But the flannel ones I love, because you have the flannel ones that are, like, you know, like, butch, 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 you know. And then you also have the flannel ones that, like, have the fucking bitch-ass haircut. What the fuck? And they are just walking like, they are walking the fucking runway ditch. And you were like, I own that shit. And you also know what I'm talking about, right? You know the ones. I mean, they're fucking gorgeous. But my favorite, <clears throat> and I was, I was doing some research for this joke. And I spoke to the lesbian across the hall in my salon. I'm a hairdresser. And I talked to the lesbian across the hall. Because, you know, <clears throat> generally, the lesbian couples are like <clears throat> the haircut that has more angles than a fucking geometry book. Or they're the haircut where like I wash my hair in vinegar and baking soda twice a month. You know, that's the ones. But then <clears throat> there's also the gay men of lesbians. Does anybody know what the gay men of lesbians are? They're called Hey Mama Lesbians. Do you know about those? She does. You know y'all know about Hey Mama Lesbians? Hey Mama Lesbians are those lesbians. They're like, <clears throat> they're leaned up against the bar. And uh, I, I, where's my hat? Give me my hat. They have the backwards hat on. <clears throat> and they're wearing like a wife beater and like a Hawaiian shirt and like a puka bead necklace. And they're like leaning up against the bar. And they're like, <clears throat> hey mama, what's going on? <laughs> and they're like, well, what, you know, I got, I got somewhere to go. Yeah, like, yeah. So, like, you leave the bar with them, and you go home, and they, they take you to a fucking parking lot and roll the seat back. <laughs> like, let's get it on in the dark parking lot. I mean, what the fuck? We love a hey mama lesbian, because we love a gay man. But you know what? It is what it is. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joel Furtick. Have a good night. Joel Furtick, everybody. Give it up for Joel Furtick. Happy to see Joel Furtick back in public. I haven't seen him since he was interviewing Mark McGrath on MTV. That's what you look like. You look like an old uh, VJ. Uh, guys, we're going to try and shake things up because I'm going to admit it's been a little tense in here tonight. So your next comedian coming to the stage is going to do a thing called music. 
Now, music is the thing that all of the people with fans who want to perform here do. And I send them all away. I say, don't bring customers in this place. <laughs> but thankfully, your next comic is uh, also unlikable. So he does music, but without anyone following around. If you guys are ready, put your hands together for a guy who wants to go as the American badass. It's Brian Williams. How you guys doing, everybody? I'm Brian. I know what you're thinking. That's a good-looking Mexican dude. Got some news for you. Psych, I'm a terrible-looking Asian man. Let's we'll see if we're better now. Not really, but it's funny, so I'll keep it out of tune. I have a song about stupid thoughts I have as a man or as a hey mama lesbian that means something different to me because I live at home I'm always like hey mama bring me some tater tots I used to I used to love playing Pokemon because it was like a whole little world inside of a video, a video game cartridge. But it lacked one thing. Politics. I wanted Giovanni to run for president. To keep all the illegal Pokemon out of Kanto. All the illegals running around. Crowding Poke Centers taking up resources <laughs> for free not on my dime <laughs> I'm fat and I go to the doctor a lot every time I'm there they tell me the same shit no matter what I'm there for they say I could lose some weight went to the doctor the other day he said, Brian, you could lose a few pounds. I said, thank you. But you're a dentist. God thoughts. Stupid American God thoughts. I don't like Asian stereotypes. Like we're all bad drivers. I don't think Pearl Harbor helped with that. We ran our planes into a bunch of ships that day. I have theories. I think they were trying to get to Arizona. Not the USS Arizona. They took a wrong turn at Albuquerque. That was a bad accent. God thoughts. Stupid American God thoughts. Donald Trump said they're eating cats and dogs. Just like everything else in America, Asia's way ahead of us. I don't think you'd be misogynistic and transphobic at the same time. If it were me, I'd be happy there were more dudes to hang out with. Guy thoughts. Stupid American God Thoughts. Speaking of God Thoughts, it's November 5th, God Fox Day. God Fox. <laughs> Killed Guy Fox tonight. <laughs> you guys find it funny that meth heads offer to clean everything but their own teeth? It's almost like you have to put meth in toothpaste to get them to do it. What would that be called? Methamphetamine? I 
I hate people that think weed does everything. Smoke weed for depression. Smoke weed for anxiety. You should try CBD. Fuck yeah, I love Charlie Daniels band. Turns out weed doesn't cure dyslexia. Got a thirst for knowledge, but didn't finish college. Guy thoughts. Guy thoughts. Man, I'm having fun. You having fun? I love it. I'm stalling. Because I don't want to play this solo I have coming up. You guys ready for the solo? I don't have one. Psych your mind. Still in the pocket. Hot pockets. Let's bring back Jacob. Brian Limbs, everybody. Who sat there with a guitar on his lap for an hour and never tuned it. So that's interesting. That was, uh, that was, I'm gonna be frankly, that was interminable. That was like when you go to a concert and the guy's just talking while playing the first two chords and never starts the actual fucking song. Uh, all right, well, guy thoughts. I hope that's stuck in your head. Sir, is that gonna be stuck in your head? Do you ever have stupid American guy thoughts? Unlike stupid European guy thoughts, right? They're all like, oh, I hope my train's on time. <laughs> stupid European guy thoughts. Uh-oh, here comes Charizard. He's gonna let us know that Giovanni's not running. They're stealing the Pikachus, they're stealing the Psyducks, and they're eating them. No. Hey, hey, I know, I'm not that. I'm just stating it how it is, how it is. That's what a political correspondent does. Uh, here's the update, here's the update. It looks like Kamala Harris is going to win the state of New York. Woo! Woo! Yeah, no fucking way. Who would have thought that, right? Yeah, big surprise. Let's bring Jacob back on. Poor Donald Trump. I guess you can't go back home again. Uh, all right. Your next comedian coming to the stage, I saw him recently at a show on Sunday where he fucking demolished some stupid loser named Blake Carlson on stage. Yeah. Your next comic is a killer. Put your hands together. Wait a minute, is that Blake Carlson? Let me double check. I get that confused. Oh no, your next Carlton, your next Carlton is uh, Put your hands together for Sam Melson. That's right, I tore that twink a new one! And he could use it because the old one was worn out. Home Sweet Home, what if it was called Dome Sweet Dome and Jacob McFadden gave me a crazy blowjob? What then? <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm the next president of the United States of America. <laughs> Do you guys like, I'm not gonna do a fucking true detective bit. Do you guys wanna do a call and response bit? I really need your help, so whenever I point the mic at you, if you're a fella, I need you to go, yeah. Can we do that, fellas? Yeah. Thank you. Now if you're a lady, you can do this too. Can I hear my ladies? Yeah. I'm not gonna assume. And if you're something else, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Fellas, <laughs> you know how dentists are like sex. Yeah, yeah. Once every maybe six months, <laughs> a nice young lady puts her hands in your mouth and does all the work. Yeah. <laughs> but fellas, you know what I'm talking about. 
you can't finish until an old guy comes in and says it's okay. <laughs> Did Buffalo Bill only kill and skin white people? Or are we gonna have to cancel this guy? <laughs> Let's see, Fuck. this is a pro all my material was about Guam, but then that asshole totally blew up my spot. Mm, yeah, we'll do this. Uh, I really like rules. Uh, I really like rules for the same reason that I was a conductor for Halloween, uh, and I have a Rain Man poster in my room. I really like how kids think about rules. I really like, like kids on the playground. They're learning about rules for the first time, right? You have tag, very easy, very simple. But then you have imagination. So you and your friends will be like Power Rangers or something, right? And you're kind of just making it up on the spot. So you'll look to your friend, you'll be like, laser beam. And then your friend, pretty smart guy, he goes, force field. <laughs> but this is where you get him. You go. <laughs> You know, there's a thing about my laser beams. <laughs> they go right through force fields. <laughs> I really like rules like when you get older too. Because you start thinking about rules that should exist but probably don't, right? Uh, does anybody in here like UFC? This is, here, I need you to say, I need you to go yeah. Can you go yeah? Okay, that's important because Sometimes when I say, does anybody in here like UFC? Somebody will go, yeah, like they got like a little too into it and got fucking CTE. So that's, I'm glad that you're safe. You do kind of look like one of the like Dagestani guys who like, like would have wrestled bears for the first like six years of his life. It becomes too easy after that. So I love the UFC and I recently learned that in the UFC, it is not illegal to kiss or tickle. And you can do it in whatever order you want to do it in. Can you imagine, can you imagine being in like the most important fight of your life in this stupid fucking cage and Joe Rogan with his big stupid fat gut and bald ass head, he's talking about you and then you get pinned by like a really, really muscular guy and he starts sweating on you. And then slowly but surely, and you'll know what I'm talking about. He starts kissing your neck. You lock eyes. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> he dials it back. He starts tickling you a little bit. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fucked up? I was looking up stuff for that joke and like, you know when you Google something, you get like four different like, also Google this, like you'll have a great time. The four things that came up for that were, are throat punches illegal? MMA. Is scratching legal? MMA. Why do I like being tickled? And is there pinning in MMA? I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Let's find out. Get 20 seconds. Oh, that's really easy then. <laughs> I, I love all of you. Uh, I think I'm. That's it. Thank you, Jacob. San Melson, everybody, keep it going for San Melson. Uh, all right, everybody. Your next comic, and he wrote this down, he's a real one. Everybody, put your hands together for Damian Anderson. Home sweet home, how we doing? Home sweet home, give it a pause for everybody here tonight. You know, home sweet home, my, my friends always ask me, hey Damian, why do, you, why, do you, why do you call your white friends the N-word, why do you greet them that way why 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 do their faces light up when you go up to them and you say what is good my nazi let me tell you 
let me tell you why I don't do that. That's not true. I call them my niggas. That's not, that's a different word. That's a different word. <laughs> I don't call them Nazis, all right? Remember Silver? All right. Anyway, anybody a big comic book person here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, y'all get it. Y'all get it. It's weird being a comic book person because it's like now because all the movies, like, you know, comic book shit is popular now. And it's like, and I really think the comic book movies have hit their kind of peak now, but like y'all say it in like the most disrespectful way. Like my worst, my worst critique like that I hate the most is like when normies try to be like, oh, the plots don't even make sense now. And I'm like, how dare y'all? Because y'all don't understand the comic book movies. These are the fucking plots that have like out of the comic book stories, the hundred years of comic book stories. These are the best. This is the best of the best. Y'all weren't in the trenches when we were getting stories about how when Mary Jane was dying and when the doctor figured out how, he goes, yeah, it's because Peter Parker's cum is radioactive. That's why, that's why, he, that's why she's dying. Like, that shit is fucking awful. Like, y'all weren't in the trenches when Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver turned out they were, their twin brother and sister, they were having an incestuous relationship. And then you figure this out through the eyes of Wolverine and he proceeds to sit in the bushes and watch them fuck. Like, y'all weren't in the trenches for that. Y'all were not outside. Well, you guys probably were outside and I was inside reading these traumatic ass stories that I shouldn't be reading. But you know, you win some, you lose some, you know. <laughs> Ew, um, anybody, uh, hello. Anybody single or relationship here? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm clearly single, as you can tell. And, I don't know, dating is weird. Like, as a, as like a dude, date, like, dating is weird, right? Like, having a crush as a dude is weird. Because you're expected to act, like, masculine in, like, the most, like, ridiculous situations, right? Like, you gotta fucking sit there. You know, you, you be at the club, and then some nigga, like, step on your shoes, white people is a very deathable offense. Like, you can die for this. And then you gotta act tough. You gotta be like, nah, nigga, what's good? And then you gotta, like, get in his face and shit. And then, but then later that same night, you be with your niggas, and then your crush walks in, and then you turn to him, and he goes, do you guys think she liked my fit? <laughs> do you guys, 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 do you guys think? that when she walks by me and smells a hint of my cologne, that she looks off into the distance and then thinks about a family together and our grandkids and how we're gonna go die old together and have a house. And I die first because that's how humans work. And then she dies a couple of years, years later. You guys think she does that? I mean, I don't, you know, cause I'm a man, you know, I don't do that shit. I'm, you know, I hold my feelings in and then lash out on my loved ones like a real nigga does, you know what I'm saying? Don't do that, guys. Go to therapy. I'm, 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 I'm dying inside. <laughs> nah, but that, that shit just makes me think how guys, I don't know, guys, we gotta do better. I don't know. I don't know. Like, porn is fucking, if, porn is like proof, if anything. Porn is crazy, because like, the genres to me don't even make sense, because like, in porn, it's supposed to be your ultimate fantasy, right? Like, you can be whoever you want, and like, in your mind in these things. But yet, like, there's still, like, genres where you bribed a woman for sex. You telling me you couldn't, in your own fantasy, have enough riz to ha get this woman to have sex with you? That's your fantasy, is to bribe a woman to have sex with you? Y'all should be more on board with this. Snuff porn exists. Like, I'm just saying, like, I don't know. That shit is weird. <laughs> I don't know. Fucking, anybody religious or atheist in the audience? <laughs> nah. I don't know, I just think, like, both sides got it wrong, because I'm agnostic, and like, to me it's because it, it makes, both sides make humans look like the douchebags of the animal kingdom, y'all think we're more important than we are, like, Christians and shit thinks God loves us, and I'm like, I don't think we read the same book, like, I'm pretty sure he fucking sent down the flood like it was a reset on The Sims, like, that nigga did not care about y'all, <laughs> and then on, like, I don't know, at least the Greeks like got it right. Like they didn't worship them niggas out of love. They worshiped them niggas out of fear. They were all brother and sisters on Game of Thrones shit and fucking each other, marrying each other, and causing havoc on human humanity. <laughs> like Zeus, Zeus fucked every like he had like a demigod child with every like a, like millions of women on the planet. He would change himself into an animal to fuck this woman. He didn't have to do that. 
he's fucking Zeus. Like, I don't know. That nigga would change himself into a geese and be like, oh, I'm gonna nibble on a nipple with my beak. And they're like, no, you should stay your ass inside. No, that means Damien just been my time. That was Damien ending his set with some classic bestiality humor. Yeah. Classic Damien. Remember, he called us all the N-word, which is cool. That means we can say it now. Yeah, they can Nazis. Oh, I don't want to call myself that. I thought I was finally going to be able to sing along to the radio when I went home. All right. We're going to keep this thing moving. Uh, your next comic coming to the stage. You probably know him. Uh, he is uh, the, the less funny friend of Joel Furtick. Um, a lot of people say he writes for Joel, but that's not true because Joel has funny jokes. Uh, everybody put your hands together for the aggressively approaching the microphone, Taylor Pearson. How are we doing, everybody? Excited to be here tonight. I already did one set. Let's do a second one. Completely different vibes. Uh, my name is Taylor Pearson. It is election night, so I want to talk about a very, very important issue to me. And I'm going to need y'all to rock with me, all right? Like, I'm being honest, truly supportive. I believe all men under six feet tall should be eligible for the Special Olympics. Okay? Look, you still have to prove that you are good at the event that you're at. But as a person who lives with this affliction day in and day out, I'm tired of showing what we can't do and more trying to show what we can do. Yes, thank you, but you know what? It does not take a man being tall to be a man. There's lots of different uh, rites of passage, uh, fucking traditions around becoming a man around this entire world. You have your bar mitzvah if you're of a certain religious inclination. Uh, you have having a beer with your dad or having sex for the first time. Not with the same person, you fucking perverts. I saw you. We'll work that, we're gonna get there. There's kind of a joke about fucking your dad. We're gonna work on that. Flo gets it, she likes it. But more importantly to me, I believe the first time you truly become a man, have you gentlemen ever been to a strip club? He has not, he has. How old are you? I was 17. You were 17, exactly. That's kind of cool. After a certain age, going to a strip club after a certain age is objectively fucked up. I think around like 21, 22, that's when it becomes fucking weird that you all have like houses, girlfriends, children, and you're all sitting in a circle like, who's gonna be the first guy to spend $300 and ruin his life to get a hand job in the back room? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't me, Sam. It was fucking one of my friends, obviously. Wink. Wink. Because there are better bonding experiences we can do as guys. Right? I think we can help out the community more. My theory, let's make fucking charity and volunteering kind of cooler. Right? Like, you know how much I would help up and show up to a soup kitchen if it was Miller Lite on draft and a golden tea in the background? That sounds sick. Cleaning up a river or a park is basically a field day already. Fucking let's play capture the flag and let's just make it a pay for play thing. How about this? I don't know if anyone here is old enough to remember this. Do a telethon. And after five consecutive good donations, you get to make one uncensored, untrackable prank call. You can either call your principal and call him a slapdick. You can call your ex and say, please take me back and then hang up immediately. You can do whatever you want because you raised $25 for the homeless. This is the problem with America. Sponsor to me, do what I want to do. Oh God, I'm just kidding, okay. Oh bother. But yes, uh, so was, uh, recently, speaking of gentlemen, as I was trying to do, I was at the next generation of gentlemen coming up. I was at my friend's child's little birthday. He's six, he's a little savage. He's awesome though. He came up to me and he goes, hey Uncle T, I bet I can hula hoop better than you. And he did it right in my face. Really good. Really good. But I know how to hula hoop, so I want to do it. But I don't know if you guys have hula hoop recently. Bonnie's not here, so that part of the joke is falling off. But hula hooping as a 35-year-old man is tough. 
because you want to tell this little boy that you're still athletic and still got it, but at the same time, you were looking his six-year-old in the eyes while going like this. <laughs> Hopefully, home sweet home, you guys will get to know me enough. You will know exactly what I did. I stared that little boy in the fucking eyes and said, you're going to learn today, son. Boom, I win. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, so here's other things I have done this week. I have done within the last few hours. I got a haircut today. Ooh. Who likes it? Do you like it? Yeah, it's not bad, right? It's okay. It's okay. Calm down, Joel, because I didn't go to your hair cuttery. I went to a black barber. Fuck. Yeah, right? <laughs> this is the best you could do with this white boy hair? Come on, man. We got we to gotta have a meeting next time. But when I showed up, Shit, where am I going with this joke? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I code switch so hard. So hard. But hey, hey, whoa, whoa. I learned a long time ago, you don't go with bonics. You don't go change the tones of your words. You don't say words you've never said before. To me, I just start caring about things that I have never cared this much before about my life. Like, do you guys want to know how much I care about LeBron James? 364 days out of the year? About a three and a half out of 10. Today, fucking 8.5. <laughs> Yo, I don't know, bro, but like the thing is he's putting points up, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, his name is Taylor too, so like, I, did I hit him with the Taylor gang or die? Yes, I did. All right, we're gonna finish this off with a thing that I do actually care about. Farmer's markets. Code switching. Oh! oh Flip-flop, flip-flop. I'm fluid, baby. I do not care for farmer's markets. Because frankly, the whole point of the thing is I'm gonna pay you more for an ugly-ass oblong tomato because it's gonna go straight to your pocket because I'm supporting small businesses. Okay, prove to me that you are a farmer. Just because you're wearing a fucking Carhartt shirt in a parking lot does not make you a farmer. Whenever I go to a doctor, a lawyer, or frankly, even a fucking dentist. They have their diplomas on the back of the wall, proving their accomplishments. The next time I go to a farmer's market, I want to see a copy of his farmer's almanac and the name of his favorite sheep. Please prove to me that you stand on business. All right, everybody, my name is Taylor Pearson. Thank you so much for your time. Taylor Pearson, master code switcher, everybody. And uh, just Brian Williams doing his thing behind me, I guess. Uh, Taylor Pearson, do you believe he code switches very well? <laughs> Hello, I'm Taylor Pearson. Give me one moment. D -d 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 hey, yo, I'm Taylor Pearson. <laughs> I'd like to get a haircut up in this bitch, dog. Straight up, you know I got cash. Tick, tick, tick. I could pay with card if you prefer that, though. All right. Uh, let's keep the show moving. Your next comic, she's a regular here. She's one of the few people that have been doing comedy in this city as long as I have. That's right, we are both unsuccessful. Uh, your next comic and I have had many political disagreements, but what I always respect about your next comic is that she is principled. She doesn't say stuff just because it helps her team. I know she believes it. And that is why she is one of 24,000 people who voted for Jill Stein tonight, everybody. If you would put your hands together, representing the Greens. <clears throat> tick, tick, tick. My bitch, Kate Carroll. Yes, yes, I did. I voted for Jill Stein, who has the fucking running mate who's a transphobe and believes in the fucking 16-week abortion ban. Yeah, I voted for that person. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, no, I, uh, I actually... <laughs> also, do, do, in Bonix, what year is it? 1998? <laughs> We're gonna get, fucking get it right, dude, it's A.V. <laughs> Um, and it should fucking be a considered a fucking like dialect in itself because we have learned so much more about the world in general through AAVE than anything white people ever came up with. Um, <laughs> like, have you seen black Twitter? It's iconic. <laughs> Let's get it right. No, I don't know. I, uh, it, it's a, uh, <laughs> 
how is everyone doing tonight? Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I do mean that sincerely and not from just like a stand-up perspective. It's rough, it's rough. I, uh, I remember where I was on um, uh, whatever, November 8th, uh, 2016. Uh, I was at an open mic. And um, we thought everything was going great. And as the night went along, the TVs were on, so we saw what was happening as the open mic was going on. So the first half was like needlessly joyful. <laughs> just people just being like, Hillary, yeah. And then halfway through, I'm pretty sure the host of the open mic threatened to kill themselves. <laughs> like that's how bleak it went. Mind you, if you want to know how, how it went for me, I'll tell you. Um, I thought everything was gonna go just fine, so I was making jokes. I was actually wearing a, uh, I was wearing a blazer over top of a hoodie. And if anyone's ever seen Dogma, um, I looked like one of the angels. So I made a joke that I was Metatron and I was here to tell everyone that it's all about to end. And I had no idea how right I was. So as the night went on, we all like fucking realized what was happening. So all of us individually bought bottles of champagne just for ourselves. <laughs> and drank champagne out of the bottle, and then I got so drunk, I thought it was a good idea to drive 35 minutes away to fucking Colonial Heights to sob into the leather couch of a reluctant fuck buddy's grandmother. Like, I literally, this is what, this is how badly that, like, that night went for me. And I know everyone has their own individual stories about that shit, but I'm here to tell you, shit does change. I know I'm at an open mic right now, but guess what? You want to know how this time is different? I am married. And I own the couch that I'm about to go cry into for the next two hours. No, I don't know. It's a fucking, it's a fucking weird time to be alive. It's been a weird time to be alive. I am, I am someone, I, I, I've been an activist since I was 16 years old. I've been feet on the street for as long as I can remember because the booze has rotted the other years away. Um, before that, uh, <laughs> that's how I cope. Um, but no, I am. Um, uh, at, at this point, I'm having to come up with like certain coping mechanisms, just to deal with the way that the world is operating currently. And I came up with a really good one, and I think that everyone in this room could probably utilize it in their own personal lives. I promise it does work. So, um, so let, let me let me tee up a little example for you of how I use this. So. Um, I was watching a video on YouTube about progressive tax reform because I like to party. And, um, and all the comments were, most of the comments were very like inquisitive about the concept, like how like to explain this, all of this, like all the different tax codes. But there was a series of comments that just seemed just unnecessarily angry about shit that didn't affect them. <laughs> like people that were saying shit like, we shouldn't be taxing the rich like that. They earn that money fair and square. Um, by the way, the reason why I say it like that is to me, all of these fucking dorks that don't understand this shit, they all to me sound like the orphans from Annie. And Trump is Miss Hannigan. Um, <laughs> just lying to them to get them by. <laughs> just letting them know that everything's gonna be okay. We're gonna get immigrants out of the country. You're gonna get adopted tomorrow. Like shit like that. That's how I'm pretty sure this shit works with these people. So to cope with this, what I have done is I have started singing these angry vitriolic comments back to myself to the tune of, of songs from the musical, Annie. And like I said, you can do this, you can use this. I'll, and, I'll, and I'll show you how I did it. So like I said, I saw that one comment that was like, oh, we shouldn't be taxing the rich like that, blah, 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 whatever. My first reaction is, well, honey, let's be perfectly honest. These people fucking hate you. They'd be happy if you died tomorrow. They wouldn't care, as long as they have your money. No, 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 no! I'm gonna be rich tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow I won't be just an underperforming member of society who continues to vote against my own interests to align myself with some greater moral understanding that isn't even applicable to modern day. I mean, really, if you guys actually read the Bible and Leviticus, it's appropriate to put someone to death for eating fruit from a tree that's less than four years old. 
I realize it's a strange example to use in this situation, not to mention, I might add, you're, the chances of you ending up rich, maybe from winning the lottery, is so unlikely. You're more likely to die from bowling a perfect game than ever win the lottery. I'm not kidding, that's a real statistic, look it up. That just goes to show where this way of thinking is. <laughs> you are never fully dressed without a semi-automatic weapon. Um, all right, guys. I, I, I hope everyone voted, but also, um, if shit doesn't go our way, it doesn't matter. If it did go our way, we need to fucking stand up and fucking keep working. We got shit to do. Thank you. Yeah. I don't want to be the one to say it, but white people don't have rhythm. <laughs> That song really sort of fell apart, didn't follow the cadence at all. It was way off beat. But you should hear Kate do Rap God. She's amazing. She's really, really good. <laughs> all right. By the way, Kate Carroll started off strong, making fun of Taylor Pearson, and then said, you should do AAVE, and lost everybody immediately. Just real quick, does anyone know what AAVE stands for? Okay, non-white people who went to University of Richmond. Non-friends of people who went to University of Richmond. Do you know what AAV is? African American Vernacular. African -American vernacular English. Don't you love it when white people say stuff like that? I also know Ebonics. She knows Ebonics. What are you, from 1998? Sorry, I didn't mean to ask you so many questions like that. Uh, all right, let's keep it moving, everybody. Your next comic is a member of our United States military. Uh, so I guess that means he voted for Trump. Everybody, put your hands together for a man who might have to serve a woman tomorrow. Chris Joyner. Oh no, a woman. Doesn't Trump look like one too? I don't know. If Trump, if Trump does become president, at least we'll be the only country with an orange guy as president. Uh, anyways, uh, let's do some election stuff. Uh, we all saw that Trump pulled that shift at McDonald's. I'm pretty sure he made everyone uh, recount the 10-piece McNuggets, just like election votes. Uh, if Kamala Harris did pull a shift at McDonald's, she would have just been working with everyone she put on work release. Uh, it took a while to hit, too. Don't worry. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, let's, uh, let's get into it, guys. I am part of the Army Reserve because, you know, believe in uh, protecting a country at a part-time level. I might be a full-timer after tonight. We don't know what war we're going to go to. Somewhere in the Middle East. <laughs> Maybe somewhere here. I don't know. <laughs> No, uh, I'm <laughs> Army Reserve. We're always on the standby, uh, like a woman's dildo on the dresser, but they see more action than us. <laughs> no, don't worry, it just goes down a lot deep. Um, uh, a little bit about me, everybody kind of knows that I'm an automotive YouTuber. Um, for that being said, I did do, uh, do a car series build where, uh, how do you build a car if you never had a father? <laughs> <laughs> That's what people comment. They're like, damn. Uh, how do you hold a flashlight if you never had a father? It was the number one video. Uh, my dad did comment, though. It was the only negative comment. He was like, that's not how you hold it. Uh, I did grow up with step-parents. My mom remarried. My uh, stepfather and her got married in Vegas. And uh, as a bachelor party, my uh, stepfather and I went to a Vegas strip club where he bought me a lap dance. It's not the weird part. The weird part was my mom came out and was the one performing the lap dance. <laughs> uh, no, let's see. Uh, do you think if like, just just off topic, do you think if like the third party, like the Libertarian Party won, Trump or Harris didn't win, they would just be like, what the fuck do we do? Like, what do we seriously do? They don't plan for it? Because you don't see ads or anything for it whatsoever. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, I, th I do think we need a president that is uh, as open-minded as JFK was. <laughs> no, it, it, if Trump does win, the positive for RFK is because he's going to be part of his administration. He'll be the first Kennedy in the White House that isn't the primary sus uh, primary person to be assassinated. 
He's like third in line. Trump will be first. Finally, we're being progressive. <laughs> I hate getting into arguments with people that are like, uh, I was arguing with this one, when I, I was having a discussion with this one person one time, and they were like, uh, you know, I never go to Petersburg. It's really dangerous down there. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I was like, where do you live? And they're like, Hopewell. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Let's go to the book for some jokes. Uh, you guys, uh, did you see those beepers in India, uh, Lebanon, that went off all at the same time? Yeah, why, why do terrorists need bear beepers anyways? When they went off all at the same time, it was a tragic thing, but like they're so behind in technology, I feel like in the next couple years they're eventually going to get Nokia phones. Those things are bricks. No last of that, okay. <laughs> um, let's see. P. Diddy. What a guy. I can no longer buy the same amount of baby oil as I've been buying and walk up to the register without being put on a watch list. Unless I say no, Diddy. <laughs> uh, Jerry Seinfeld, you guys know. I'm pretty sure everybody knows about Jerry Seinfeld from the show. You know he dated a 17-year-old in high school when he was you know, famous in 94? I feel like he did that just to re uh, appeal to his younger audience. Damn, that. all right, that quick. We have an election update at all? Uh, Danny's uh, trying to cool down. He's in a belt costume. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll get out of here on this one. Um, Matthew Perry died. We'll never get Hot Tub Time Machine 3 finished. <laughs> um, in the military, though, we do a lot of training and do helicopter training. Uh, before we take off, people pray to God. I just pray to my God. I say Kobe's name three times. That's the exact response I was hoping for. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just like Kobe, that last one ended in a thud. Uh, uh, no, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a thud. It was a. It was a very loud crash, and then a fireball, and probably some screaming. Um, all right. Guys, we are uh, we're hurtling through your next comic. What a delight. So happy to have him here. The host of Ipanema, which is now every Monday. Yeah. Every Monday. Every Monday. Ipanema comic, everybody. Put your hands together for Flo. Yeah. Keep it going for Jacob McFadden, everybody. Pretending like he didn't vote for Donald Trump, and that's okay. We're accepting it. We are. Uh, I'm gonna. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm gonna try two jokes, and then I'm actually gonna do jokes. So, so bear bear with me. If you get, you know bears, polar bears, grizzly bears. You know, I know you know bears. <laughs> This is my impression of somebody being uh, surprised to hear that Sean Combs urinated. P. Diddy, P. Diddy. <laughs> this, one, this one didn't work at the last mic, but I hope it works now. Um, Euthanasia uh, sounds like it should be the opposite thing of what it is. True. See, like, <laughs> when I sit down and write a joke, the thing, the thing I'm hoping for is somebody to say, true? <laughs> All right, we're gonna do real jokes. Um, I 
too many times to do that. You don't like ketchup? Hell yeah. I knew it. I saw it. I've been thinking about getting top surgery. I've been thinking about getting top surgery. I'm gonna get my asshole sewn shut. To give, uh, to give everybody an idea of where my love life is at, uh, my last porn search was uh, people who care about each other. <laughs> I've been spending a lot of time in my above ground basement speaking to my imaginary friend state representative and um, I'm trying to convince him that we need UBI. We need UBI, right? Everybody's heard of UBI. And he says, uh, he always says the same thing. He says, universal booby inspectors. Uh, men, am I right? I've decided to stop having sex with men. I've decided, I've decided. Because every time I have sex with a man, it's like 40 minutes of foreplay and he's like, can I come? My car got repossessed. I was able to drive it here. Those demons are just very persistent. I've been feeling um, some phantom pains um, for my penis, uh, but I still have my penis. Um, so really just my penis burns, which my doctor tells me means uh, somebody's talking about me during sex, which is, Exciting! <laughs> um, been trying to have sex. I'm a virgin. Um, last time I tried to have sex, somebody somebody said, "Are you gonna come for me like a good little slut?" And I said, "I don't know about that." <laughs> Which is the sexiest response you can have to that question? My friend uh, is a sous chef. I have a friend who is a sous chef, and he gets really upset when I call him that. He says, hey, I've been going to school for a really long time. Uh, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> I'm like, you're, you're chefing up a lot of sous. I don't know what, I don't know what to tell you, baby girl. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end on this bit. Um, I've got a friend who says the N-word a lot. Um, and he's black, so he's allowed to do it. Um, but some, sometimes he calls me the N-word and I don't know how, how to respond to that. It's not just like a British cheers where you say cheers in response, you know? It's not the same. And I, I told him this, I was like, I don't know how to respond. When you, when you say that to me, you say, well, you can just call me the F word. And I was like, no, no, I, no, I can't. Especially because if we're trying to be analogous, like I gotta, I gotta chop off the last consonant, right? <laughs> and I don't know how I feel about running around being like, what's up my fagos? <laughs> what are you doing my fago? <laughs> Where my fagos at? Anyway, that's been my time. I've been Flo. Please bring back up your host, Jacob McFadden. That's so funny. That's the same way I wake up both of my kids in the morning. I just went to the door and I go, what's up my fa- oh, anyways. Well, they're mama's boys. Uh, uh, Danny McKay's about to come up here with another election update, but first, uh, guys, allow me to remove that chunky Dracula from your table, if you don't mind. That's a callback to the funny guy from earlier. <laughs> <laughs> here, I'll leave some of the empty cans, and I'll get rid of the disgusting amount of ketchup. <laughs> Danny, go up there. <laughs> Thank you, Jacob, for your colorful remarks. Just want to let you all know that Kamala Harris has now secured the state of Colorado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If this lead keeps up, then we will have our first Indica American president ever. Wow, that sounded a lot better in my head. Yeah. What does that mean? 
I think I agree with Flo. I don't understand it, but I don't think I like it. Is Indica the one that makes you sit in the couch? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, so he called her lazy. That's, I guess, the joke. All right. Your next comic would never call a strong Indian woman lazy because he would never call an Indian woman. Put your hands together for white nationalist Tyler Bauer. What's going on, Home Sweet Home? All right. I don't mean to be divisive, Home Sweet Home, but I think Bernie Sanders could still win. Sorry, I just woke up from a coma I fell into in 2016. Why is Hillary Clinton doing blackface? Anyway, let's get into it. Let's get down to brass tacks. Uh, we're familiar with the term thought, right? It's used to describe a promiscuous person. Thought, it stands for that hoe over there, that hoe over there. What about the hoe that's been in front of you the whole time? That you might not have realized uh, how much you care about them and how sweet and nice and cute they could be to you. They're called hoes because you reap what you sow, home sweet home. Wear a condom. Why are condoms so expensive, though? Seriously, guys, inflation's getting wild. I'm not just talking about when I blow them up with my mouth. Condoms are crazy expensive. I went to CVS the other day to buy a pack of Trojan Ends condoms. Trojan Ends, any other Trojan Ends users? That's the normal size condom. Thank you again, Blake, for being honest. Everyone else is a liar. Trojan Ends condoms, it stands for your dick ends here. $8 for a three pack of these Trojan Ends condoms. That's crazy. That's like uh, $2.75 a cum. It's like paying a bridge toll to a major city every time you come. Birth control is easy pass. Uh, I think it's funny the way old people talk about race. Uh, I was talking to my grandma, the other, my grandmother the other day. She said, I love all people. It doesn't matter what color you are. White, blue, purple. It's like, grandma, you're not saying brown or black. What the fuck? White, blue, purple. <laughs> She started naming like obscure Crayola colors. She was like, shocker blue, doesn't matter. <laughs> speaking of grandmas, uh, speaking of old people, they get fucked a lot by scam calls. They lose all their money to scam callers. And I think they're about to really get fucked here soon because AI is getting really good. The scam callers are gonna start using this AI to really uh, clear out those social security accounts. Like imagine a scam caller calling up your grandmother and sounding like a alternative rock radio station giveaway. Your grandma picks up the phone. It's like, I hate everything about you. <laughs> it's an alternative rock radio station, but the, the it's still in broken English. So it's, <laughs> uh, what's good, caller? You are to uh, get three days grace tickets. <laughs> Holy shit, I feel lightheaded. I, singing three days grace is hard. I almost passed out. I got tunnel vision. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> the AI calls like, hello caller, where to get grace, three days grace tickets, you are the winner. One day maybe you get three days grace tickets, just provide your social security number, Google Play gift cards please. Google Play gift cards please now, three days grace concert happening sometime today. I hate everything about you. Music used to be cool guys. <laughs> Music used to just be cool. Uh, you know what else is cool? Nissan Altimas. They're wild. They're cool. They're crazy. Nissan Altimas are wild because I didn't think I'd still be playing with plastic cars as an adult. Little known fact, every Nissan Altima comes with a gun in the glove box with the serial number scratched off and you can do whatever you want with it. I feel like if you buy a Nissan Altima with a bumper hanging off, it should cost more like distressed jeans. It's vintage, guys. Uh, I bought some CBD lotion the other day. I bought some CBD-infused lotion the other day. I used it to masturbate. I used it to pleasure myself. I used it to harm myself, guys. I was really hurting myself. 
I was using the CBD lotion to masturbate, and I couldn't come because the CBD lotion, it relaxed my dick too much. My dick's back was too relaxed. But then I remembered I bought some cocaine-infused lotion. I started using that on my dick, on my member, on my throbbing member. I started using this cocaine lotion uh, to counteract the CBD lotion, but it just made my dick small, and it didn't work. And then I had a real problem because my dick was addicted to this cocaine lotion now and it started sucking other dicks to get more cocaine lotion. <laughs> but then I remembered I also bought some ketamine infused lotion. It was a three for one deal, guys. Uh, I started using that on my throbbing member. Uh, <laughs> my throbbing member, guys. <laughs> I used the ketamine infused lotion on my throbbing member. And then I was just kind of outside of my dick looking at my own dick. It was weird. <laughs> I feel like the Trail of Tears would have been a lot cooler if it was the Trail of Beers. Trail of Tears would have been a lot cooler if it was the Trail of Beers and it was sponsored by Coors Light. It would have been a lot less sad, a lot less tears. Uh, they would have got there a lot faster in the Coors Light bullet train as well. I think people with Parkinson's fuck the best. People with Parkinson, they, they fuck the best. They're their own built-in vibrator. They have the shakies. I think Michael J. Fox fucks better than anyone else in this room. When he's hitting it from the back. To the future. Part three, it takes place in the desert, guys. It's sandy, you don't want to get sand anywhere. All right, I've been Tyler Brown. Thank you so much. Goodbye, sure do love you, Jacob McFadden, your host. Tyler Bauer hosts the show at Basic City, so if you'd like to be uh, full of anxiety about the election results tomorrow as well, you can go there and drink and play cornhole in the middle of the show. Um, I was, here's, here's how freaked out people are. I was just downstairs and a guy ordered a bomb like some sort of bomb drink, and then needed my help fishing his shot glass out of his beer glass because he didn't understand what was going on. And I was like, hey, let me help you, buddy. And he, I like plucked it out, and he went like, why would they do that? Everything's going wrong tonight. So that was that. All right. Now we are down to some of the finest comedians of the night. Your next comic is off. Is that a rosary? Oh, no, that's just beads hanging off your phone. I thought you stood up with a rosary, and I was like, oh shit, I missed some real news. <laughs> All right, your next comic prays over the rosary every night. In fact, for this set, he's already done 13 Hail Marys. Put your hands together for, I believe it says, Clake Borrelson. Clake Borrelson, everybody. 14, Jacob, 14 Hail Marys. I did one on the way over. All right. Hey guys, how we doing? Good. You guys like true crime? You guys look like a true crime kind of table. What's like your favorite one? There's so many, it's hard to keep track. All of them? Oh my gosh. You like Jeffrey Dahmer? You like John Wayne Gacy? You like the uni you, you, You're a big Gacy guy? I think that's exactly what you said. You said you're a huge Gacy fan. You're gonna. You're a copycat, you're gonna do the same thing for the 50th anniversary. I think that's exactly what you said. Okay, cool. Well, I can't wait to see your clown makeup. It's pretty exciting. But you got any, any like uh, favorite true crime? Any good cases come to mind? Your favorites that you like to listen to? Any so Zodiac killer. Zodiac. All right, that's a good one. Classic, lots of puzzles. Very autistic, I like it. I, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I, I've been tuning in kind of to the Menendez brothers recently because that's kind of been back in the news. They're, you know, maybe going to get off. <laughs> Not sexual. <laughs> get off, or like stay in jail. Like, I, and I've been like thinking about it and I think they should like, you know, get off scot-free, you know, because like I'm not their parents. <laughs> like it's done, <laughs> you know? Like they've done their to-do list. I think we're all safe, you know? <laughs> But, um, boy, oh boy, um, I, I like the verbiage people use of, like, asking you for money. Like, I walk around Carytown, where we are currently. I walk around here quite a lot. I live here. And uh, people will be like, do you have, like, a 
you have a dollar on you? You know, could you spare some change? And this one guy, I walked by, he was like, do you happen to have a dollar? You know, like fate was involved or something. <laughs> do you have, like he was setting up a magic trick. He's like, do you happen to have a dollar? And I was like, no. And he's like, check again. <laughs> And it's like, I never carry cash, like who does? Like it's all plastic now, you know, petroleum, dinosaur bones, we've got it in our pockets, it's great. And it's like, so now I've just started, I, I've resorted to doing favors for these people, you know, whenever they ask me for money, like, do you have a dollar? And I'm like, no. Do you want a foot rub? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Hell yeah, it's like, do you have some change? It's like, no. Can I squeeze your squeegee, you know? <laughs> That's if they have a squeegee. Not all of them have a squeegee, but some of them have a squeegee. I gotta get out of my car to squeegee their fucking squeegee. It's tough. Um, I, uh, I have evolved past missionary position. We did it, guys. I finally did it. I, I've evolved past it to what I like to call visionary position. It's similar, okay? I'm on top and she's dressed like Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> I like it a whole lot. <laughs> um, so now that I've lost my virginity, I've seen my penis finally. Uh, I've got a girlfriend we've been dating two years. We're getting a little rougher in the bedroom. So I know, lots of oohs, lots of ahs, lots of handcuffs. It's very fun. Um, so we've been trying out some safe words. You know, it's important to find one that works for you and your partner, you know, and the safe word we're currently trying out right now is live from New York at Saturday night. <laughs> Which works out pretty well, I'll tell you why. Uh, so no matter what you're doing, uh, when you say it, you know, you know, me and my girlfriend, I'll say it, we have to stop uh, and cut to opening credits, and then from there, we address the problem, we change costume and get ready for my entrance. Get ready for my entrance, okay. Thank you, Sabet, I appreciate it. Or get ready for her entrance, depending. Um, I get really frustrated, I feel like this is a very human trait, like I'll get frustrated at the random, like I'll be having a bad day, you know? Like I, I was getting really frustrated, I was having a bad day, and I looked down at my shirt and I told the chrome to get the fuck off me. So it's just one of those days. I. Uh, I, I'll leave you guys with this one. I, my favorite thing currently, my favorite hobby, what I like to do is I like to sit on my porch, I like to smoke a bowl, and I like to listen to big trucks come around the corner, and then I guess what kind of big truck it's gonna be. <laughs> if you haven't done it, you gotta, okay? <laughs> I don't care if you don't smoke, I don't care if you don't like cars, it's the best fucking thing I've ever done. Because I'm sitting there, I hear a big engine hum, I hear those big tires roll, and I'm like, fire truck. <laughs> it's a fire truck. And then I'm like, no, no, it's a dump truck. It's a garbage truck. And then it's a fucking beer truck again. It's always a fucking beer truck. Richmond's a beer city. It's not an emergency city, which I guess is fine. But you know what? I think it would be better if beer trucks had like a horn they could honk for me. Because <laughs> right now... I'm rooting for fires, and that's just no good. <laughs> All right, my name is Blake Carlson. Thank you guys so much. Give it up for your host, Jacob McFadden. All right, everybody. We're going to see you tomorrow. Uh, we're down to our final few comics of the night. Uh, she's, uh, I believe she just gave you a classic 90s suck it motion. Uh, but you know what? You don't have to, because this is a free country. At least for the next 24 hours, guys. Uh, we are nearing the end of the list. Let's all dab it up. Let me get one. Let me get one. Damn. Damn. What's up, man? Hey, man. You have a good night. Damn it. All the white people I care about seeing me do that aren't here. Someone tell them I did it, but not Charizard. He's been bad at reporting the facts tonight. Um, all right. We are down to our final few comics, but we have some goodies for you. Your next comic is a delight, okay? Do you like delights? Yes. How about you? Do you like delights? You like delights? You don't know what delights are? Um, do you like treats? Do you like uh, surprises? Do you like coffee creamer? You like delights? Your next comic is all those things and more. Put your hands together for Sabet. Woo! 
thank you, Jacob. I'm so happy to be such a D a light. Uh, and guys, I'm really, 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 really nervous about the election, and I just have to let you know that so that I'm not thinking that you're thinking. I also, yeah, sorry, I hate air conditioning, and I do this every week, and yeah, I just hate it. I hate the sensation of being blown on. And every time I say, oh, I hate the sensation of being blown on, but like, I don't mind when someone goes down on me or like something like that. But I'm like, I need you guys to know that I'm nervous about the election so that if, if it affects my performance, like, you know that I know that like, we're both like aware of this. So now you can just like worry about me and you can do that and I can worry about me and I'm doing that. And we've like put everything out on the table. I do this when I get into Ubers. I say to the driver, just so you know, I always throw up. Every time I'm driven to the airport, I throw up. And I'm telling this to you so that I don't have to live alone with it, so that we can both know that throwing up is gonna happen and it's not gonna be a surprise. And they're like, fucking wish you hadn't said that, you know. Um, this is my first election in Virginia, um, Virginia, uh, since I was a child. When I was in college, uh, I dated the president of the Bernie Sanders Club. Yeah. Pretty, pretty fucking cool, right? Uh, he gave me chlamydia. Just wanted me to feel the burn. Uh, he was British, which is super weird to be British and to be the president of the Bernie Sanders Club. Just like, Daddy! He'll never be your dad. It's not your house, it's not your country. But it is sort of like a weird thing to be like wanting to be president of the Bernie Sanders Club as a Brit. You know, that's like a real dom activity. Whereas like it's like really simp to like also like be for a candidate that you like will never get to have as your lord or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Um, he can really like do it all, you know, which makes me wonder like where is he today, tonight? Um, probably in England, probably doing that. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, it's like I, you know, liberal person, obviously, like, woohoo, woohoo. Um, the whole outfit, like, woman power, this and that, yeah, yeah. Um, I like to pretend like I'm really hip to what's going on in politics, but like, I don't know the Secretary of State. I used to live in England, I don't know the Prime Minister, but I do know the name of the Secretary of State and the Prime Minister in Netflix is The Diplomat. Um, Prime Minister Trowbridge, Secretary of State Gannon, could do the same for House of Cards, West Wing. It's not for our own shit, you know? The things that like really matter. Um, dating in Virginia is different than dating in New York. I brought a guy home the other day and he took out his gun and put it on the table and I was like, whoa. And then he took it and he was like, watch this, and started waving it around, this like laser pointer, like to play with my cats. They'd be like jumping around, catching it. So now I have these like four gun activists in my house. So I have four cats. <laughs> They're all like fucking red, you know? And I'm like, you know what? Like, you won't be able to get an abortion if you need one. And they're like, we're fixed, meow me. I'm like, okay, ah. Uh. Um, so. It's a little scary living in an all red house. Um, yeah, I usually like talk about sex because that's like so fun. I really do like having sex a lot, um, especially when it's good. Um, although, you know, uh, daily politics can be kind of a stress if you think about the past and history, like it's like more fun, you know? Um, I don't masturbate to porn, I masturbate to TV shows. And one of my favorite TV shows to masturbate to is The Tudors. Heard of it? Heard of it? Okay, so it's featuring King Henry VIII and his mistress Anne Boleyn. One of my favorite scenes is when they're fucking in the woods and she's on top of him, she's riding him, she's like looking like all good. I was like, oh yeah, get it girl. And then he's below and he's like, oh, you know? And, and, and then he goes, he, like, they're like, they're getting at it, they're getting at it, they're getting at it, they go, oh. And then he goes, I'm gonna come. No, he didn't. King Henry VIII didn't say that. He was like, I'm gonna splew, splew my fuffle, your highness, or whatever they said in those days. Like, it was, you know, um, no, that's not what he said, but I liked it. Anyway, I hope this night ends well. I hope our days end well. Thank you so much. I'm a set party. <laughs> yeah.
for Sabet, everybody. Keep it going for Sabet. All right. So anyway, Sabet mentioned chlamydia. Uh, I, I, you know, last time I got chlamydia, it was in Tennessee. I got chlamydia and gonorrhea. And I did not know, so both times I've gotten medical treatment and said, oh, hi, this is, uh, you're not, you don't know who I am at all. Um, I no longer have chlamydia or gonorrhea. Um, I'll finish this story about how I cured them. Uh, I didn't cure them, a doctor did. Uh, I've, been, I've gotten medical care in Tennessee twice. The first time I was taking acid in the mountains and I got bit by a deer. So I had to get a rabies shot, which was 12 shots in the stomach and we had to drive to a guy's house and wake him up to give me the shots. Then, we had to try and hunt the deer for two days. Although I had already gotten the rabies shot, so I was like, we don't need to do the test. We, I'm good, we're fine. And honestly, I'd like to leave Tennessee now. Uh, second time, I got uh, chlamydia in Nashville, uh, and, and uh, the guy uh, had to stick a Q-tip down my pee hole to do the test, and then I had to get an antibiotic through a needle into my dick. And I told my dad about that, and that's how it happened to him in the 70s, and he was like, yep, and I was like, all right, cool. And then every time I've ever mentioned that to a doctor, they'd be like, we have not done that since the 1970s. <laughs> and I was like, holy fuck, did I get like a moralizing doctor? Did he see me walk in with gonorrhea, chlamydia, and no wedding ring, and be like, fuck this guy. I'm getting the Q-tip out. Anyways, uh, all right, now someone just took a photo of me as the guy with gonorrhea, so that's cool. Hey, you know what? I've lived. Just like your next comedian. You might recognize your next comedian from giving up on election updates an hour and a half ago. Uh, everybody, your next comedian. You might recognize him as the advanced evolved form of Charmander. He's our favorite starter Pokemon. Put your hands together for Charizard. Oh, yeah, no, it's funny. Uh, yeah, you guys probably recognize me from all my political updates. Um, and uh, I'm here to give another about a, a bomb threat. And that bomb threat is about my set. And no, that's not coming from the Russians. Yeah. Boom. 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 Yeah, no, it's uh, this time of year. The first week in November is always tough for us, right? You know, it's always being debated in Washington. We always have strong opinions about it. You know, uh, it makes us feel a certain type of way. It makes us feel sad. Of course, I'm talking about daylight savings time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so who uh, who went out and voted today? Did everyone vote? Good, 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 good. Uh, who'd you guys write in? <laughs> yeah, I uh, I wrote in uh, Kanye for every single one. Yeah, so I don't know how he's gonna be president and mayor of Richmond and on the school board, but hey, nothing worth doing is ever Yeezy, right? Oh man, it's getting colder out there. It's getting colder out there. Do we have any uncircumcised guys in the audience? Yeah, yeah, nobody? Okay. Well, I guess no one's participating in hoodie season. Yeah, it comes with your own cheese. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, if you don't like that one, you're not gonna like the rest, so. Stick around, stick around. Oh man, uh, there's a lot of rumors about me. Uh, some say that I'm uh, not circumcised, and um, it's true, I am circumcised. Uh, but that one doesn't bother me. The, the, the rumor that bothers me is apparently, uh, a lot of people think I'm the guy who's still Woody in Toy Story. Yeah. Crazy stuff, right? I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it at all. I don't see it at all. But I'll tell you one thing. The one thing that actually really did get me uh, was I had a coworker who was like, he was like, uh, a few weeks ago, he was like, oh, happy, happy Yom Kippur. And I was like, yeah, happy Yom Kippur. He goes, well, you're Jewish, right? And I was like, no. And he's like, well, you look Jewish. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? I know, you guys thought, you know, I was bringing up Jewish jokes and making that Kanye one. You thought I was gonna go in a different direction. And he goes, well, you know, uh, I totally thought that you were Jewish. You know, I mean, for example, you have a lot of opinions on things. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? 
did I just unlock a new stereotype? You know, I felt like a little Xbox achievement went on above, like, you know, you just got 20 Gs, you just unlocked a new stereotype. 20% of gamers have unlocked this. Oh, come on, really? With a new stereotype in gamers, it's gotta be a lot higher than 20%. Anyway, anyway. Uh, I've always been a bit of a naive person. Naive, you know. Uh, any of you guys ever got the talk when you were little? Jesus Christ, no wonder Trump has a lead. Yeah, you know, the birds and the bees, right? You guys wanna know how I got the talk? And it's pretty fitting for tonight. I asked my dad at 10 years old, Dad, why do people hate Bill Clinton? There you go, there you go. So he sits me down later that day, and he's just like, all right, so I want you to start telling me everything that you know about, you know, the, the facts of life and all this stuff. And I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I was 10, so I just started naming off cuss words and body parts. I'm like, fuck, shit, bitch, titty, penis. And he goes, anything else? And he goes, bastard, asshole, vagina. You know, my poor dad, he's trying to keep it together, busted from laughing, and I said, there's one word, there's one word you cannot say. The boys at school told me, you cannot say this word. He goes, all right, what, what, what word is it? And I know what y'all are thinking, oh God, what is he gonna say? And I go, it starts with a P. It starts with a P. He's like, you know, I know what y'all are thinking. So we go back and forth and back and forth, and then I'm like, okay, I'll say it. And you know what the word was? It wasn't pussy, it was pervert. Apparently, I, until about the time I was, oh, I don't know, 25, I thought pervert was one of the worst words you could say. <laughs> crazy, crazy, right? I'll leave, you, uh, I'll leave you all on one last one here. Um, you, guys, uh, you guys ever donated clothes to a thrift store? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever uh, gone back to that thrift store and your clothes are still there? <laughs> that's, uh, that's not a fun feeling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's not good at all, you know, and you're trying to keep it together and then the person will come up behind you like you finding everything Okay, you turn around you're almost in tears. I'm not <laughs> And that was the day I did I found out I was not a fashion icon clearly Well, anyway, I'm gonna keep coming up here with political updates even though they're not you know as satisfying as Jacob wants But unfortunately, let's bring Jacob back up here for Charizard, everybody. Yeah. All right, there goes my man to get some delights. That's what I like to see. Uh, hey, guys, uh, you know, I'm Mr. Mime, and I'm here to do an update about politics. Uh, California's about to close, and they expect it to go to Kamala. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's supposed to do a joke, right, Danny? Uh, California, more like, uh, gonna charge you, Mora. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was great. I know. Well, I, I didn't have anything ready, so I went off the dome. Um, guys, we're down to our final few comics. Are you excited? I'm excited. Silver, are you excited? Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, wow. You could, you could tell tonight's a lot of anxiety, because even the documentarian's getting involved. Uh, <laughs> he never said anything to Coco. Uh, you're, that's the gorilla that never spoke sign language. Um, your next comedian. It's so good. Every pause I put on this just adds more pressure to her. She just shot me. Your next comedian has been waiting patiently. I'm so excited. Maybe if I talk too much, I'm gonna go right through Everybody put your hand in the remote on Stephanie Moyer. Stephanie Moyer. white guy screaming at me by now, right? Oh Jesus God. Christ. Oh Whatever you want, Jacob. <laughs> uh, you were talking about your sex ed when you got the talk. Um, I got the talk from my dad. I got the door, don't worry. Uh, I got the talk from my dad when he was 12, but halfway through he told me he was molested when he was little, and then we never finished it. Uh, also, Sabet's not here, but uh, she mentioned that she talks to Uber drivers when she gets in the car, and I do something similar. 
Um, anytime I give anyone a ride, I ask them if they're going to rape and or murder me. As you know, no one likes a liar, right? Uh, no one's done it yet, which is great. Um, but I also like to then ask them if they think I'm going to rape and or murder them because equality. So far we both haven't done it, so we're good. Uh, this is going to be wild stuff. It's all over the place. I apologize in advance, but uh, let's go with it. Um, ooh, I don't understand the flex she ate. He ate, they ate. 10% of the world is starving. That's not a big flex. I think once we reach like 50 or 60% of the world, it will be more relatable. Um, there's a lotion commercial that I've seen lately, and uh, the narration overhead says, uh, Hi, it's me, your dry skin. And I can't stop imagining what it would be like if our skin could talk to us. I'm just going to talk to you guys. You're right here. It's great. Uh, <laughs> Like, what would it sound like? Would it be one voice or like a collective hive mind voice where every skin cell is just screaming at you? Yeah, you like that one? I think so too, but imagine like you're trying to masturbate and then your skin is also moaning or maybe it's like telling you a little to the left or slow down, you know, or you tickle yourself. It starts laughing too. Like, I feel like it would take me out of the mood. You'd just be like cock blocking yourself at every every uh, chance. Um, oh, speaking of masturbating, I think it's so weird that we shake with our right hands because that's the hand most people use to masturbate. So I only shake hands with left-handed people. Uh, that is not true. I shake everyone's hand. Um, you guys look very young. I'm going to say early, early 20s. Okay, where were you at in 2008? Your mom's house, okay, uh, fair. Um, how old were you, and did you, did you watch news, or did you, no, okay, cool, well you probably don't know this, so this is great. Um, in 2008, the GRTC Transit won best um, national public transport in the United States. And then that same year, a bus hit and killed a 55-year-old pedestrian woman. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I live here. I think it's great. <laughs> the duality of it, you know. Um, I hate when people ask me if I want to see a picture of their kids, because I don't, ever. <laughs> I ask them, do you want to show me a picture of your kids? Uh, and then after a while, they just stop, you know. So that's great. Um, I don't have a lot, but I might try to butcher this last thing. Uh, is anyone a child of divorce? Yeah. I picked on you last time, I won't do it again. You are, how did you break up your family? <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, I'm also a child of divorce. Uh, I like to think I helped break them up, but I was like six months old, so. Um, I'm sure it was all my fault. Uh, did your parents ever like date after they, not each other, other people? Oh, I thought you were talking about each other. Oh, did they date again after? Oh my God, that's, did they get back together? Oh, oh, they just fucking like, that's fucked up, wow. Damn, I'm so sorry. Well, maybe for the best. Uh, anyway, uh, well my parents fucking hate each other, so they would have never dated again. Um, but uh, my mom would take us with her when we were little on dates. Um, but then we'd get home and we'd tell her husband. So she stopped that shit really quick. Um, I miss Chuck, he had a boat and a daughter he'd bring, it was pretty cool. Uh, and then when I was 13, my stepmom died, so my dad had to start dating again. And uh, people really love a widower. Like he's just like got that tragic backstory everyone wants. So. Um, he remarried, and uh, then two years later, she died. And people don't love a double widower. Uh, he didn't kill them. Your face. It, yeah, that, totally fair. Uh, we switched schools a lot after all the deaths, and we also moved states after one of the deaths too. So I had to re-explain to people that we weren't like running from the law. Um, they. Oh, okay, great. Uh, I'm gonna try to wrap this up. Um, so, 
One dead wife is tragic, two is suspicious, as we covered. Um, but uh, I'm just really glad astrology wasn't big at the time because all of his dates would have included these three questions, which is, how'd your first wife die? How'd your second wife die? What's your sign, right? And the answer is cancer to all of them. <laughs> um, I gotta end it because I don't, I don't remember what I had after this, but thank you very much, Jake. Thank you guys, you're a great sport. Stephanie Moyer, everybody. Her father's a murderer, give it up for her. She got out safe. You gotta appreciate that. This is true. I did a show. I did a show on Sunday, and afterwards, a lady in the audience came up to me and asked me what my sign was. And I, did, I told her my birthday. She said, "You're a Cancer," and I went, "Okay." And she went, "That makes a lot of sense." And I was like, "I don't know what that means." And then I sat in a corner. This is a show in a lingerie store, by the way. So I went and sat on a big foam boot, and I googled what a Cancer is, and I said, "They're getting mad." I was like, "What the fuck? <laughs> fuck this lady." I'm not moody. I'm gonna beat her up. I'm not gonna beat her up. I'm gonna beat her up, fucking bitch. Ah! Would everyone judge me if I beat her up? Fuck that, I'm not a cancer. <laughs> Danny has an update. Yes, Danny has an update. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Danny's got news that's gonna make everyone in the room happy. <laughs> I do, because I am happy to report that Kamala Harris has won the state of Washington. Yeah, yeah, we can all call her Seattle's best. Yeah. That's great, wasn't it? Yeah, that was good. I think that means that Kamala Harris is going to be topless on the Starbucks cups now. I don't think they have the topless mermaid on the cups anymore, do they? Yeah. I mean, you guys all drink it, but you don't look at it, I guess. They do? No, I just drink it. Oh, okay. They used to have a topless mermaid. I know because I'm old enough that we had dial-up internet and I used to jerk off to Starbucks cups. Um, I'm kidding, I, I dye my beard. Your next comment coming to the stage. Uh, who the fuck said that? Danny, who is this? Me? and Hansel. What? <laughs> it, what was it? E. E? And Hansel. H-A-N-S-O-U-L. Like and Hansel? Yeah. Oh, okay. And and how do you know Danny? From managing Wagon Brewery? I'm managing no. Wagon. Oh. You know my business? I'm not in your business. I'm in Danny's business. <laughs> how do you know Danny? We met at Hot for Pizza. Yeah, is that all you were hot for? Hot for Pizza, Danny? <laughs> Here with a kiss and tell update, it's Danny McCabe, everybody. Come on, Danny, give him a kiss and tell update. Come on, Danny, with a kiss and tell update. Here we go. Wow, this is how you know this show is not going well. <laughs> kiss and tell, kiss and tell. And Hansel is very sweet. We met, and we went on a date last night, and it was fun, and she came out to see me tonight. And now... And now, and now she is, and now she is here to help support all of you guys, except for Jacob, because well, he's Jacob. I'm on the end of Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, uh, you, you. I'm, I'm a Cancer too, but I can say that you are, uh, you're a Cancer both astrologically and figuratively. So. Not to make Danny feel bad, but I'd like to remind everybody I am a cancer survivor. We did a fundraiser here in 2016. Just so we're clear, uh, Danny making fun of a cancer survivor, I don't know if you want to go on a third date with a guy like that, because if you ever get sick, if you ever get sick, God only knows it's going in the act. All right, anyways, we'll move on from bad boyfriend Danny McCabe. Uh, <laughs> Don't fuck with me. Your next comment coming to the stage. <laughs> All right, everybody. I'm so excited, everybody. Put your hands together for Bonnie Cardwell. Yeah. Shit. Shit, and Hansel, you are a good troop. Are you having fun? 
Yeah. Uh, good, good. Wasn't that part where uh, Jacob lied to you about hearing his chlamydia wild? Who was that? Fucking crazy. <laughs> Alright, so um, I think it's super weird. We don't have a uh, website like Pet Finder, but for child adoption. I really think the uh, concept is really great where you could just like, oh, first of all, I think we could have a nice clever name for it, like Kit Catcher. Yeah. Although I think um, that might be something a little John Wayne Gacy would be too into. I think that guy knows about that. <laughs> uh, I, I just really like the concept though of being able to just get a, log onto a website, start scrolling through and judging by what matters most importantly first, looks. But being able to get more information on each child is really great. You can scroll through and just be like, that one's pretty cute and housebroken. Love that. Oh, that one's a little bit older. It seems like it's got a traumatic past due to a rough start. Probably best as an only child. Oh, this last one's got a bite history. It's probably gonna have to be a behavioral euthanasia at some point. <laughs> I'm gonna really, I don't know how to figure the rest of this joke out, but I do know that that joke has legs, unlike those kids after I catch them. So uh, speaking of some kids who I don't want to chop the legs off of, um, I have lovely niece and nephew, and my niece just turned two on Halloween, which is really fun, but shopping for two-year-old's gifts is really fucking hard, because everything is either too small and she's gonna choke on it, or just completely stupid. So I did what any good aunt would do, and I got her a Ouija board. I figured this could be baby's first speak and spell. Who better to teach a baby to spell anyways than like our great dead classic authors? Hemingway, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Edgar Allan Poe. Maybe not Edgar Allan Poe around my underage niece, actually. And I also have a really lovely nephew who I love. Um, he has been trying to copy me on certain things, which is really cute. So I've been trying to use that power for good and teach him about really nice things like rock music. And with that in mind, I wanted to teach him the universal sign for rockers, obviously. But he's three and his dexterity is kind of all over the place. So he tries his hardest and then just flicks off everybody in our family, which is, turned into one of my favorite things. I also love the way these kids try to manipulate me. They'll just like throw shit on the ground. Pick it up, bitch. Which sometimes I will, but the reality is like, they're like that high school, you know, bully you're just trying to win over, so I'll do it for them. But the thing is, I've also dated a narcissist, so I know how to handle this manipulation. I drain their bank account and leave the state, like any good person. <laughs> But uh, my uh, brother did ask my nephew the other day what he wants to be when he grows up, and he said a comic, which was adorable. So now I know exactly what to get him for Christmas, an eight ball of cocaine, a bottle of Jameson, and early childhood neglect. Um, so I know Halloween is over, but when you're in love with Michael Myers, Halloween is year-round in your heart. Right, thank you, Hansel, my girl. I mean, what woman doesn't love a good chase? <laughs> but the reality is, he's kind of the perfect man. Like, for starters, he's a family man. Nobody will get between him and getting to his sister. <laughs> and that boy cares about legacy. Even if he's ending it, he cares about it. And he is handsome. I've heard every... Well, maybe not every, but most women say that they want a man over six feet tall. And <laughs> look at him. And also, he's classically handsome, because what is a Michael Myers mask if not a young William Shatner? And the dude is strong. Like, that's the kind of man I want shoving me against a wall. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hell yeah. I love her. Take, take, I love her. <laughs> Look, okay, it's gonna... <laughs> Look, he might murder you, but it's gonna be the best fucking orgasm of your life. I also really appreciate how much he enjoys a nice slow walk. Great for a romantic date. But most importantly is his ability to be patient and shut the fuck up. Amen. Yeah. I guess all I've been really trying to say is, I'm looking for a guy in murder. Six foot, walk slow, shut the fuck up. That's all I got. Keep it going for all the comics you've heard tonight. Yeah. Keep it going for Bonnie.
everybody, give Bonnie another round of applause. We are down to our final comedian of the evening. But listen, man, if you want to walk out on him, I get it. This guy deserves no respect. He's the Rodney Dangerfield of the Richmond comedy scene. He deserves such a little respect, his girlfriend actually walked out on him before he started his set. Oh, I'm sorry, he asked me to fill time until she came back, but I have nothing. Uh, hey, have you guys... Have you guys seen that ad, that, uh, that, that ad where uh, uh, the women go in to vote and then they, they, uh, their husband's like, go to vote right, <laughs> right? You gotta vote right? And then they go and they, they, they don't vote right. <laughs> and then they look at each other and like, yeah, we're sitting together. Have you seen that ad? My wife and I went to vote today and uh, we brought the kids with us. So she, you know, I had the two year old with me and then she went to go vote at a different booth and I just leaned over and was like, Howie, go over to mommy, give her a boom. Go give her a boob. So he walks over to my wife like this. <laughs> over to her boob. He walks over like this. And as soon as he got there, I just leaned my head up over the thing and went, You better vote right! <laughs> so anyways, if he wins Virginia, that's my fault, I guess. <laughs> I, uh, mine and my two-year-olds. But, uh, you know, you can't, you can't blame the son for the father's sins. Uh, was that enough time? Nope, she's still not here. Okay. Uh, your next comic is coming up without a support net. Everybody put your hands together for a man we have not seen in a long time. He's been off in rehab, but he's back now. Put your hands together for Richmond's very own Richard Gear. It's what? Not the right guy. It's Brian De La Fontaine. Hi, guys. Uh, you guys know the uh, Mandela Effect? We've heard of this. Do you guys know that in Vanilla Ice's Ice Ice Baby, you know he drops the end bomb Go back and listen to it again. It's fucking insane. One of the most beloved hip-hop songs. Vanilla Ice is just dropping the hard R. It's crazy. I can tell that joke because I'm black. Half black, half Filipino. Shoe size 12, very black. We oui, wee, oui, very Filipino. Uh, yeah, I've, I'm black, but uh, I've never been with a black woman before. Uh, this is actually due to uh, medical problems. Uh, you see, I have the kind of autism that makes me sensitive to loud noises. That's not funny. That one's for that. That one was for Danny. Enjoy your se enjoy your second date there. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. All right, all right, all right, guys. <laughs> facts, facts, facts. That's right. And? <laughs> Love it. Black girl magic. <laughs> Guys, I like to think about what I would do if I was a woman. Little, little quirks, you know? Say, say I got some uggo uh, trying to hit on me, you know? Why don't you just queef, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, you want my number? Yeah, my number is... <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I think that that's like the male equivalency of this. And that's like what I do when women hit on me. You know, just, oh, yeah, I'm so handsome. Whatever. You right. You right. I'm just kidding. I don't do that. I, I, I am just kidding. I don't, I don't do that. I, I do this. <laughs> you guys remember that one? <laughs> That's a fun one. <laughs> hey, guys. It's official. Woo! I just tested positive. Yeah!
I have feline AIDS. <laughs> All right! When I got the news, I had to take a long look in the mirror. <laughs> long look in the mirror. Brian, you've got to stop blowing these cats. <laughs> you probably thought it was another cat when you looked in the mirror. <laughs> you gotta stop blowing these cats. Brian, I, and I know what you're thinking. Brian, please tell me that you're using protection. Brian, please tell me that you're going to Spencer's Gifts and buying those novelty small condoms when you're blowing these cats. I'd like to answer that question with a question of my own. If you were the only grown ass man with feline AIDS, wouldn't you hold a grudge? It's a little condom humor. God damn it, I cracked myself up. <laughs> Guys, uh... Big finish! If you think I'm annoying, it's because I am. And I've always been this way. You know? Um, picture me at 16. I am... Captain of the improv team. Yeah. Cock of the walk. Literally the funniest fucking human being walking into a friendlies on my birthday with my chosen friends or friends who would accept me into a friendlies. Wait until you wait until you hear the bit. Wait until you hear the bit. You will want to choke 16-year-old me by the end of the bit. By the end of the bit, you might want to Trayvon Martin me. Oh my god. Damn, nigga. You shouldn't have been in that neighborhood. You have to picture. <laughs> he didn't live there. You, you have to, you, you, you gotta put yourself in the shoes of a server in 2005 in suburban Virginia at a friendlies. And then you gotta hear what the bit was. The bit was, I would sing my order as James Blunt. Listen to how annoying this is. I'd like some ice cream. I'd like it pure. Banana split, banana split. With all the toppings, too. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you want to choke that kid? <laughs> I've always been this annoying. I've always been Brian Fontaine. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's been my time. I got a, a show next Thursday at Jack Brown's. Yeah. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Let's bring Jacob back up. What time is that show? Nine o'clock. Next Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Brian Fontaine, don't forget your sobriety, my man. Brian Fontaine, this is the most expensive thing you own. You gotta take it with you. There you go. All right. Uh, that guy sucks off cats with AIDS. That's the takeaway from that set. He, he does oral sex on cats that have AIDS. And somehow, despite the fact that the cat with AIDS nut in his mouth, he does not know that cat penises have spikes on them. Yeah. Which is... <laughs> which is actually a pretty bad thing when you're using the Ultra Thin, so... Anyways, not a smart guy. <laughs> Guys, this has been comedy from home sweet home. <laughs> As always, we'll be back on the third Tuesday of the month, and hopefully they'll have settled this whole election thing by then. Thank you very much for coming out. 
Some of us are going to hang out for a little bit outside. Thank you very much. Good night. Goodbye.